Hello and welcome to the applications for second order linear homo homogeneous uh, differential equations, uh, which is just spring mass systems in this video. Um, so in these problems, we're going to have some mass on a spring, and there may or may not be some kind of dash pot at the bottom that will um, dampen the oscillations of the spring. Um, so a couple things to keep in mind as for conventions of kind of the coordinate system we're going to be using is that an upward velocity means that x prime is less than zero. A downward velocity means x prime is greater than zero. Uh, if the string is, if the spring is stretched, that means that x is greater than zero. If the string is compressed, that means that x is less than zero. Um, so you can uh, you can kind of use logic to find these out, um, or just memorize them if you want. Uh, but basically, if it's moving upwards towards equilibrium, or yeah, if it's moving upwards, just think of the that uh, the uh, the force is kind of being taken away from the uh, from the system and being transferred into the spring, so the spring is going to compress and have less uh, force to give. So when the spring is um, stretched, kind of the uh, oh well, of course you're going to be greater greater than zero on your position because you're stretched, and so you think of the equilibrium point as the basis for finding your x. So um, we have several forces in this in this um, in this system. We have the force of the spring, the force of the dash pot, and the force of gravity. So, if you uh, recall, force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, and in this system, we have a couple things that will kind of um, ev try to even this out and work towards equilibrium. So from our mass times acceleration, we have uh, minus kx, which is the force of the spring, acting on our mass. Uh, so that's kind of trying to like inhibit movement. And we, have, we also have this um, damping system. And so c is the damping coefficient. And that's going to be uh, multiplied by the velocity of our uh, of our system. So we're also taking that away. And we are going to also add some force as a function of time. And the force being of a, uh, a function of time means we might have an extra like sin sinusoidal force or something like that. But we can rearrange this and get a linear second order differential equation. So mx double prime plus cx plus kx equals f of t. And for the time being, we are not going to have any external forces on our object. So basically, what this boils down to is we're solving for the roots. And there are several cases. Um, we have a critically damped case where uh, c squared is equal to 4 uh, mk. So that is just when we have a, a real repeated root. And what's going to happen is uh, since this formula kind of only uh, only has exponential terms, it's not going to oscillate at all. It's just going to maybe go up and do one kind of pseudo oscillation where it, where it dips down below uh, equilibrium. But it's just kind of going to go up and then very quick, quickly return to, a, uh, to, um, to uh, e equilibrium state. I'll actually leave that up there. So then we have the case where c squared is greater than 4mk, and that's overdamped. 
And if you recall, we have two real and distinct roots. Uh, also, I forgot to put an x here. Um, and this, this case, we're just going to have no oscillations at all. It's just going to hit that damper and just um, flatten out uh, because we just have two. And then we have the most interesting case when c squared is less than 4a mk. And that is our underdamped case. And we're going to see something. So in this scenario, we have um, our we have two parts. We have our cosine and sine, which will produce some kind of sinusoidal uh, path. And then we have e to the px, which as um, as x, which is our time variable, goes to infinity. Uh, what you'll find most of the time is that we have this. Uh, or you'll find it unless we have a special case, which is residence, when um, it will just vibrate out of control. It will just vibrate and uh, taper off very nicely. So let's do a few um, a few examples. So we have a, a system with some damping going on and a spring and a mass. And the spring uh, constant is 8, mass is 1 half, uh, damping coefficient is 4. So we're going to set up our, our, uh, our general equation. So I've, I've set it up, and I've set up our characteristic equation to find the roots. And one thing, the first thing we're always going to check is what is c squared and what does 4mk equal? In this case, we see that c squared uh, equals 16, and 4 times uh, 4mk is equal to 16. So we have a critically damped case. And if we, no if we multiply by 2 throughout, we notice that our this will factor into it will factor into a perfect square and our root our root is negative 4 so that that gives us our um, Our position as a function of time is equal to um, so this gives us our position as a function of time is equal to c1 e to the minus 4t plus c2 e times x so time c plus c2x e to the minus 4t and at this point you might want to um, you could just plug in x0 and x prime of 0 uh, if you just uh, take the derivative of this and plug in x prime and just plug in x uh, of 0 directly into this. You can solve for c1 and c2, but I'll leave that to the viewer since that would take a fair amount of time. And I would like to show you um, uh, more examples about uh, um, Underdamped and overdamped cases. So, um, if we have a mass of 25, a damping coefficient of 10, and a spring constant of 226, then uh, 
Obviously, 4 times mk is greater than 100, which is equal to c squared. And um, so we have an underdamped case, which will give us two uh, distinct and imaginary roots. And um, so, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and find our roots from our characteristic equation. So um, I've used the binomial formula to find our roots, which is negative one-fifth plus or minus three times i. And I've just plugged that into the formula we derived in the last video. Um, so uh, one last thing. Um, we notice that we have... Um, some kind of amplitude and phase. Um, in this part. And so we're going to, going to kind of set up a geometric interpretation for that. So in our oscillation, we have C1 uh, cosine of something and C2 sine of something. And so our amplitude is going to be Our amplitude is just going to be Pythagorean's theorem, uh, square root of C2 squared plus C1 squared. And our, our phase is just going to be tan, uh, tan inverse of C2, minus, uh, C2 over C1. And so substituting uh, this amplitude phase form into our cosine and sine, we have, um, what do we have here? So here we have our, our phi, which we found out. And we might want to be careful with the phi. Uh, if C2 or C1 is negative, make sure that you're putting uh, phi in the right quadrant. So think of this as, if I extend these, uh, if, if it's negative, it's just going to be um, two pot, or it's going to be um, the like mirror image of, of that phi. Um, but usually you don't have to worry about that. And we also have the speed at which this is oscillating, which is omega times t. And omega is just k, the square root of k over x, um, which you just plug in, and the amplitude, we found it already. Um, and I'm going to leave finding C1 and C2 since it would take up quite a bit of time uh, to the, to the uh, viewer to solve that equation. Um, so yeah, that covers the bases. Um, if, we have our, um, if, we had an, if we had an underdamped case, it's fairly easy to solve. You just kind of uh, carry out the motions. There's no kind of underlying... Uh, geometric thing that you have to worry about. But thank you for watching. Uh, you can find a link to the rest of these videos in a playlist on the, with, with this link. If you want to purchase the book on our website, you can find our website link here. Um, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. All, of course, cards for all these, if you're on a mobile device, can be found in the corner. And a link will be here somewhere to go to the next video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.